Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rechai, Pradash. Double honors to those and apostles, the great most in their will. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all. Back at it with another through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai. Lord willing, this video was edifying. All right. And without further ado, I want to get right into it through the spirit. And I just want to have a little exhortation this morning going into uh resilience man all right and this is inspired through the spirit of party from the elder uh bishop i tazmoam on uh, atl all right and um you know the lesson he made pretty much saying don't let the low moments define you know uh define you in this truth pretty much and um you know the elder said one specific word that stuck with me man all right and sometimes you know um you know, in this truth, you have moments where you, you, you're going up, you know what I'm saying? And you have moments where you get knocked down, you know? Um, and uh, like the scripture says, Proverbs 24 and verse 16, For a just man falleth seven times and rises up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief, you know? So a just man falls seven times. That means a completion amount of times because separate. Seven represents completion. So you might fall down, all right? You might like 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 riding a bike, you know? Once you take the training wheels off the bike, all right? The child might still fall off the bike every now and then, you know? But you, as long as you keep getting back up, you keep riding the bike, you know, you keep continuing on to uh, uh, keep fighting, keep pushing, you know? Then you're gonna be straight, man. Eventually you're gonna get your balance right. You're gonna know, okay. You know, and that's a lot of times too, you know, at least off, off my own, personal observation all right for my walk you know and i'm sure other brothers might go through this as well but a lot of times you know we might fall because we're not balanced you know whether it be you know you being too merciful you being too judgmental you know you're 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 doing too much in one area and lacking in another you know this thing is all about finding balance and ultimately when you find balance you find perfection you know just waiting a just measure so sometimes if you might be doing too much, the most high, the most high show you, look, you're doing too much and you might get rebuked. The Lord might put the spirit on a brother to rebuke you or to admonish you or a brother might say something. And, you know, that brother might not even know what he have been, may have been saying in the moment, you know, but he could have, the Lord could just put the spirit on him, could have been speaking through the spirit and it could have applied to you and you have to be able to have the spiritual ears. All right. And the mind to be able to receive it, and to hear it, man, because, you know, you know, it might hurt to say this, but we don't got it all figured out. We're in the flesh. That's why we need the judgments and the wisdom knowledge of Yahweh Shemel Shai. And matter of fact, let me get this real quick. All right. Go to the book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus. Uh, 17, starting at verse... Uh, Thirty. I'll start at verse twenty-nine. Seven, Sirach Ecclesiastes seventeen and twenty-nine. How great is the loving kindness of the Lord our power, in His compassion unto such as turn unto Him in holiness. All right. For all things cannot be in men, for because the Son of Man is not immortal. Yeah. So you know, pretty much we're not immortal yet. So we're not gonna be fully perfected. All right. It says, what is brighter than the sun, yet the light thereof faileth, and flesh and blood will imagine evil. Okay, right. So pretty much, even the sun, all right, as bright as it is, even the sun eventually dims down, all right, and then the sun goes down, all right? So it says, what is brighter than the sun, yet the light thereof faileth, all right? But it says, and flesh and blood will imagine evil. So you may have your moments in the spirit where, you know, you on point, man. It seems like, you know... It, you, you like it's like you so on point in the spirit you know the lord is dealing with you you know you feel that you feel that spiritual divine intervention dealing in your life at a high frequency at a high operation you know and there'll be moments in the time where you'd be like damn you know in the spirit where you'd be like man you know the wadi al i know the lord dealing with me but then there'll be times where you get knocked down all right for whatever case it might be you know everything we, we know everything is the lord's will all right but there'll be some times where you might get knocked down and you'd be like fuck you know you'd be like damn all right, there'll be times where you get knocked down so hard, we'd be like, shit, is the Lord still dealing with me? But, you know, 
in moments like that, that's where you have to find the resilient spirit. All right, that's where you got to be resilient, you know, and you got to because that ultimately them, them demons, they want you to stop believing that the Lord is dealing with you. They want you to believe that, you know, you don't know anything about this truth. You're not a man of the Lord all right? because we all go off, man. All right. We're not perfect. You know, we're striving to be perfect. And we're hoping that by the time Yahweh Shai comes back, we will be found without spot and without blemish. And ultimately, in order to do that, we got to be we got to stay on our job. So that way, when Yahweh Shai comes back, you know, there's nothing that could be said of us doing anything wrong. Like Scripture say, no guile being found, of our, found in our mouth. So when the time comes for you to be corrected, take heed to the correction. That way, you know, moving forward, you'll be a better vessel, man. All right. You know, you got to have that resilient spirit because sometimes you're going to get knocked down, man. And sometimes you might say something that's wrong or you might say something that's off. All right. But be grateful that the Lord might put the spirit on her brother to correct you, man. You know, scripture say open rebuke is better than secret love. All right. This is Micah chapter seven. And um, I'll start at verse uh, seven. Micah 7 and 7, therefore I will look unto the Lord and I will wait for the power of my salvation. My power will hear me. Rejoice not again. And when you're waiting for the Lord, that takes resilience, man, because the world constantly, day in and day out, these different spirits all around you, they're trying to they're trying to interact with you to resist you, man. All right. From from elevating in the spirit. So you have to be resilient to that resistance, all right? Like sure say, make your forehead strong against their foreheads, man. You know, so you got to be resilient. And that's a form of resilience, too. Make your forehead strong against someone else's forehead and righteousness sake. That's resilience, man. All right. And you have to have that spirit in this truth, because if not, you'll get bulldozed over, man. All right. Like like the scripture talk about how uh, I wish I was talking about those the sown, the seed that was sown amongst the amongst the rocks. All right. What happens? They shot up quickly. All right. But since they had no root in them. You know, when the sun scorched them up, all right, they, they withered away because by and by off persecution, they're offended. You got to be rooted in this thing. You know, even if it leads to persecution, even if it leads to you getting rebuked or admonished, even if it leads to you probably looking stupid, you know, whether you're doing something wrong or whether you're doing something right, that you still have to have that resilience, man. You know, wisdom is like an unto a woman. All right. If you like a woman a lot. You know, sometimes you might say something that's corny or you might do something that may have pissed her off. But, you know, you like that woman so much that you're like, hey, fuck it. You know, I, I know I probably I know I fucked up, but hey, I'm, I'm going to keep texting her. Though. You know what I'm saying? And I'm speaking in a spiritual sense. Same thing with this wisdom. You know, and I'm really speaking to myself first and foremost, because sometimes, you know, you do something that's through and you're like, damn, you know, that shit really hits your spirit. It gets stuck. But it's good that you feel that way, because that's that goes to show you that you feel contrite. You know, and the scriptures talk about godly sorrow. You know what I'm saying? And if you have that godly sorrow, it's gonna bring without it's gonna bring out within you the fruits of the spirit. All right. Matter of fact, let me get that real quick. But I'll go back to Micah after Lord Willing. All right, this is 2 Corinthians, or it might be 1 Corinthians. Yeah, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, starting at verse uh 8, it says. For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent. For I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were, were birth for a season. Yeah, so sometimes you might get rebuked. You know, a brother might say something that might cut you. You know, and you, you might be sorry. All right. And, and, you know, the brother the brother uh, has every right to not be sorry for you feeling sorry, so to speak. You know, because you were cutting your spirit, you were probably doing something wrong. You see, but at the same time, you know, that's the beauty of the brotherhoods. Brothers, even though a brother will break you down, all right, uh, you have to learn to appreciate that, all right, because you have to look at it like, you know what, yeah, this shit fucking hurts and cuts the shit out of me, but, you know, hey, the brother's doing that because he loves me. He's teaching me how to, uh, how to uh, protect myself in the spirit, all right, because this is a spiritual battle, and, you know, a brother might cut you. But that goes to show you that you have a, a, a deficiency in your spiritual armor, so to speak, you know. So, you know, you, you take it, you roll with it, you put the wound, you put the, put, the, put the healing medicine, which is the scriptures. You apply the scriptures to heal that wound, you know, and you keep it pushing. And you thank that, brother, man. Like scripture says, Psalms 141, it let the righteous smite me, man. It shall be a kindness, man. You know, so sometimes a brother might cut you. That's like the righteous smiting you, so to speak. And it's like, shit, you know. But it's like, hey, 
you know what, the Wadi Yabash Mesha, I've put the spirit on that brother to speak up, because sometimes, you know, hey, a brother don't have to say shit, you know, but you could be, you could be dead wrong, you know, and, and, and not even know, you know what I'm saying, but as well, um, you you take you take the positive out of that, and you grow from it, man. You know, and that godly sorrow leads to repentance. It's Second Corinthians seven, starting at verse nine. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that ye sorrow to repentance. Okay, it says, for ye were made sorry after a godly manner, that ye might receive damage by us in nothing. Yeah, that's what it's all about, having godly sorrow, man. And when you have godly sorrow, that's going to lead to you. Uh, wanting to reconcile yourself to the most high and when you reconcile yourself to the most high it takes resilience because you have to reconcile yourself to the most high every day and that's a part of being on our purpose for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation not to be repented of okay yeah so pretty much godly sorrow if you're in a broken and contrite spirit is going to lead you to repentance that will not uh you know make the most high want to repent of repenting of having repentance upon you so to speak all right, it says, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. Yeah, if you're sorrow after worldly things, that's going to work death because you have a carnal mind. All right? Certain people, they get sorrowful in this world because they have to give up their life according to this world for this truth, you know? That's going to work death to them, though. All right? It says, for behold, this selfsame thing that you sorrowed after a godly sort, what carefulness it wrought in you. Yeah, what clearing of yourselves. Yeah, what indignation. Yeah, what fear and what vehement desire. What, yeah, what zeal, yeah, what revenge in all things, yeah, but prove yourselves to be clear in this matter. All right, yeah, so even after you go off, you know, a brother might correct you and you and you have that godly sorrow, it's going to make you be so much more on point in the spirit, man, because you're going to be like, I don't ever want to feel through like that anymore. So now you now you on this, now you in the spirit and you re being real analytical and you, you know, you making sure that you're being real sharp in the spirit, man. It's like certain fighters. All right, or athletes, once they get got, so to speak, they're, they they train that much harder. You know, they're they're watching film that much harder. They're studying the game that much harder. So they're like, they ain't gonna never get got again, Lord willing. You know, so it's like it's almost like the same thing in the spirit. But that takes resilience, man, because it's easy once you get knocked down to lay down, man. But that's why the scripture say, a just man falls seven times and gets up again, man. And that's what this that's what resilience is all about, man. All right. And that's in it. And the Lord said what? He's going to try us through the fire, man. All right. In order to be tried through the fire and to be purged and to be refined and to come out as fine gold, that takes resilience, man. It's Micah 7, starting at verse 8. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Okay, right. So, you know, hey. As long as we stay resilient in this thing, we keep fearing Yahweh Shemashah, we keep doing that which is pleasing in his eyes. Our enemies cannot rejoice against us once we fall, man. Because why? The Lord is going to pick us up back again, man. All right? It says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him until he plead my cause and execute judgment for me. He will bring me forth to the light and I shall behold his righteousness. Okay, right. So pretty much... Hey, like it says, I will bear the indignation of the Lord because I have sinned against him. So when you do something wrong in the spirit and the Lord might correct you, chastise you, you take that cheerfully, man. The scripture say, whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient with our change to a lowest state, man. For gold is tried in the fire and acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. That takes resilience, man. Okay? You got to fight in this thing. You got to keep pushing forward towards the goal at hand. You can't let... You know, uh, uh, you can't let, like sure say, let no man take thy crown. You know, you got to keep fighting, man. You know what I'm saying? You can't let a, 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 a simple mistake that you might have made, you know, uh, uh, like, like, like the elder made in the video. Don't let the low moments define your path pretty much, man. You know? This Philippians chapter 3 starting at, um, I'll start at verse 8. It says, yeah, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Mashiach, Yahweh, my Lord, who am, who I have, whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Mashiach. Yeah, you got to be willing to lose everything to win Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai. All right? It says, and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, 
but that which is through the faith of Mashiach, the righteousness which is of the Most High by faith. Right, pretty much. We're not trying to establish our own righteousness, man. We're trying to establish the righteousness of Yahweh Shemashai. We're trying to submit unto the righteousness of Yahweh Shemashai. And sometimes that, that has to do with stepping on your own form of understanding. Like the scriptures say, lean not unto your own understanding. It's not about what you think is right, all right? The scriptures say, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death, man. So you might think that somebody might be doing something that's okay, but if your Yahweh Shemashai doesn't approve, the, doesn't approve of what they're doing, then guess what? What you're saying is off, man. You know, and you need to repent, acknowledge your offense. Like scripture say, I will go return to my place till they acknowledge their offense, man. Most high not gonna deal with you till you acknowledge your offense. Once you acknowledge you're wrong, you confess your faults among the brethren if you spoke wrong against a brother or whatever, you confess your faults and you keep pushing. You know, not saying that you let it go and you and you just forget about it. You know, you, you keep it in remembrance, all right, but you do it in a in a positive righteous godly sorrow manner you know that'll help build you up in the future you know because sometimes you need to remember those moments where you went off just so it gives you a little chin check like man fuck you know what i'm saying like it, it makes you want to serve the lord even more you know because you're like fuck man you know, i remember when i did that wrong so you know, i don't ever want to go back to that again you know like a lot of rappers they be saying that they, they say you know I, I i don't ever want to go back broke you know <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, man, it's the spirit, you know? Because why did, why did they say that? Because they put it in remembrance, man. Like the scriptures say, stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. They keep that in remembrance, what it was like to feel broke, man. So they're like, fuck, you know? I'm going to keep grinding. I'm going to keep busting my ass, you know, because I remember what it was like when I was struggling, and I don't want to feel like that anymore. So it's the same thing in the faith. You remember what it was like to do something that was through in the spirit, so if you remember the horrible feeling that it felt, that godly sorrow that came with it, so to speak, you, you, it's going to make you want to be more zealous, more clear, you know, more uh, careful in spirit, more on point, more on fire, you know, more diligent, more prudent, more humble, more patient, you know, more long suffering, so on and so forth, man. All right. This Philippians 3, starting at verse 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made comfort, comfort, conformable unto his death. All right. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Okay. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect. But I follow after if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Mashiach Yahushai. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Yeah, so, you know, um, I myself personally, I used to play defensive back when I when I used to play football. The defensive back is the position that, that guards the wide receiver. And um, a lot of times they would say, as a cornerback, you need to have a short-term memory. All right? Meaning what? You got to you gotta know when to let shit go, put it in the past, and keep moving forward, so to speak. You know? Because sometimes the, the receiver might catch the ball on you. He might juke you out. You know what I'm saying? Or you might get, get you, you know what I'm saying? Someone, he might get the upper hand on you every now and then, you know? Or he might make a catch on you, whatever the case might be, you know? Or you might get scored on in the end zone. You know what I'm saying? Might be a clutch moment. They, they want to pass to your side because they know you can't guard that receiver. As a as a defensive back, you want to have a short term memory, meaning you know you okay I you know you fucked up. All right, bet I'm gonna move I'm gonna move on because a lot of times, what Satan likes to do is when you go off, he likes to harp on it and he likes to hold it in your remembrance and hold it in your face to where you get weak about it. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing if you remember what you did, all right, but it's another thing if you take from that lesson and you learn from it. All right, not not get weak. And then shrivel up in the spirit and just die, you know? That's where the resilience comes in, okay? So it's the same thing you're supposed to do in this truth, man. Yeah, you went off. Yeah, you fucked up, all right? You know, but you don't let it crush you to the point where you can't rise back up, man. It's like Scripture said, just man falls seven times and gets up again. You want to get up again, all right? It says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling of Mashiach Yahweh, of the Most High and Mashiach Yahweh Shai. 
all right let us therefore be as many let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded and if anything and and if anything ye be otherwise minded the most high shall reveal even this unto you yes yeah, so the lord sent or so through the spirit of apostle paul the lord is saying look you know or through the spirit of the lord the apostle paul is saying look all right you know you want to have this type of mindset all right and if you don't the lord gonna reveal it unto you man all right so that's the point of that right there okay i want to get another precept The Sirach Ecclesiasticus chapter 4, starting at verse 28. It says, strive for the truth unto death. To strive for something means to fight, man. So you're supposed to fight for this truth unto death. All right. It says, and the Lord shall fight for thee. Okay, right. You know, so you got to be resilient in this thing, man. No matter what. Like, like it says in Job 13 and 15. I'll get that scripture. All right. Strive for the truth unto death, right? This is Job 13 and 15. Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain mine own ways before him, man. All right, yeah. So even if the Lord, you know, even if the Lord slay you, man, whether he, you know, uh, uh, chastise you sorely and grievously or, you know, you might even have to die for this thing. You have to be resilient unto this truth, man. And especially now, if you can't be resilient, if you get rebuked, then how much more in a time of trouble where people are going to try to put you to death for being a man of the Lord? You got to have that fire in you, man, where you're like, man, you know what? I know I went off, but I don't give a fuck, man, because I know the Lord's still dealing with me, man. You know, and that's that resilience, man. All right, yeah, I may have said some dumb shit, you know. Okay, Salaki so about that, but you know what? Fuck it, man. Hey, I'm still in this thing, man. The Lord got me, man. You know, <laughs> that's what you got to have, man. You got to have that resilience, man. You know what I'm saying? Because like the scriptures say, um nor faint when thou art rebuked of him, man. All right, let me get that real quick. It's Hebrews chapter 12, starting at verse 4. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord. Yeah, don't despise it. Don't despise when the Lord is disciplining you and correcting you. Hey, you learn to appreciate it, man. Learn to see the beauty out of it. In the moment, it might not feel good. It might be humiliating. You know, it, it might crush you. It might make you feel stupid. You know, you make you feel like you don't know a damn thing. All right? Because deep down inside, we don't, man. You know? We, 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 there's so many things where we might think we know something, but there's so much things where we ought to know even more, man. Like, like the Apostle Paul said, you know, if a man thinketh himself to be wise, let him become a fool. You know? Pretty much, hey, you, you can never get too high in this thing, man. Because the Lord, he'll always far exceed our, our expectations. Let me get this real quick. All right. This is what the Apostle Paul said. This is uh, 1 Corinthians 8, starting at verse 2. And if any man think he, that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. Okay, right. So pretty much, you might think you know some, but, you know, like there's a quote, all right? There was a quote that said, a wise man knows that he doesn't know everything, pretty much. All right, and you got to come in that same spirit, you know, because we don't know everything, man. You know, we may know a lot, but like scripture say, knowledge puffeth up, man. All right, so you that's 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 another thing in this truth. It's a constant battle of uh, of walking on that tight rope, that narrow and straight gate. All right, and and, and everything that comes with it, because sometimes you know, yeah, you might get the knowledge, you might get puffed up, but it's also a battle of also staying humility, to, uh, having a form of humility too. You know, it's Hebrews 12 and 5. It says, And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him, man. That's right. So don't faint when you're rebuked of the Lord, man. You know? Like the scripture say, if you if you faint in the day of adversity, your, your, your strength is small. Proverbs 24 and 10. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small, man. You know, you got to you got to have a form of resilient spirit, man. And that all goes back to having a strong mind, strong spirit. And if you feel like, you know, you weak spirited, weak mind, you have a faint heart, pray to Yahweh to strengthen you. You know? Because ultimately, hey, you know, that's what you have to be. This is Sirach Ecclesiastes uh 24 and 24, faint not to be strong in the Lord. 
that he may confirm you. Cleave unto him, for the Lord Almighty is the Most High alone, and besides him there is no other Savior, man. Yeah, that's it right there. That's a beautiful scripture, you know? And also, this is uh, Luke 17 and 32. Remember Lot's wife, man. All right, because what it, what happened with Lot's wife? She looked back. All right, she didn't have that resilient spirit, you know, to, to be able to move forward and, and, and keep pushing, even though Babylon was being destroyed back. I mean, uh, uh, Slaki, even though Sodom and Gomorrah was being destroyed back then. All right, you know, you got to have that spirit where you're like, hey, you know, like Philippians 3 and 14, pretty much, man. You count not, you count those things, you forget those things which are behind, and you press towards the mark, man. Lot's wife, what happened with her? She looked back. And Yahweh Shai said that. No man that having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. So you can't be in that spirit of looking back. If you're going to look back, learn from the past, all right? But don't, um, don't, don't, don't pretty much like dwell in it to where it's getting you to go off, man. You know? Stir, like I said, stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. Uh, you remember wh where you made a messed up at and you learn from it so that moving forward you can be uh, more improved, man. All right, so, hey, you know, that's really the point on that right there. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to you. I will buy Shemi, I will shy about Shemi, Chakwadash, double honors to those and apostles, great milsons that we will. Peace and blessings to you like the Israel, man. Shalom and above all. You got to have that resilient spirit within us, especially in these times to come because, you know, like sure saying, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all, man. And like Sir said, we through much tribulation shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. So that's not just physical tribulation, you know. Uh, it, it could be internal things too, mental things too, man. Because the, the battlefield is in the mind. A lot of times, you know, this truth has to, in, or, uh, in order for you to be successful in this truth, first and foremost, you need the mercy of Yahweh Shemashai, the spirit of Yahweh Shemashai. But as well, when that, that comes with you having a strong mind, man. You know, like Sir said, the Lord hath not given us a spirit of fear. But of power and a sound mind, man. Having a sound mind in this truth is a, is a deep thing. Like Scripture say, give me any plague but the plague of the heart, man. You know, roughly paraphrasing, man. Or the plague of the mind, you know. So that's the point on that right there, man. So I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim, 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 Y